It's been a while, but we're finally back with another entry to the history of Gallifrey. In this part we'll be taking a look at the Time Lord's more stagnant era, but that doesn't mean its events are lacklustre. Let's begin. Following the establishment of the Time Lords, Gallifrey entered a long period where very little changed. The scrolls of Gallifrey, which contained only information up to the beginning of the Sixth Doctor's lifetime, posited that only a few generations existed between Rassilon and the First Doctor. The Fifth Doctor similarly once remembered that only a few thousand years had passed since Gallifreyans first pioneered the Time Vortex during the time of the Other. The Infinity Doctor and Marnel both came from a time two million years after the Time Lords began. Meanwhile, at his trial, the Sixth Doctor accused the Time Lords of having held absolute power for 10 million years, which would be corroborated by later Doctors and the Book of the War. At yet another point, the final day of the last Great Time War, Rassilon claimed that the surviving High Council had a billion years of Time Lord history riding on their backs, a legacy which he refused to see perish at any cost. In any case, millennia of isolation induced a complacency among the Time Lords. Their technology and power stagnated, even as other races became more powerful and dangerous. By some accounts, including the scrolls of Gallifrey of Postar the Perididius, it was the president who had succeeded Rassilon, Pandad, who faced the rise of ambitious Time Lord Morbius. He had a strong personality and endless ambition, qualities which had not been seen among the Time Lords for generations. He advocated for a more equalitarian and interventionalist Gallifrey, and amassed a cult around him, until he felt in a position to demand the presidency. Accounts differ on whether Pandad simply exiled Morbius, or if he succeeded in becoming president for a time, beginning his campaign against the universe, only to be backstabbed by the High Council and exiled. In any event, Morbius escaped, and massed his cult into an army which he intended to take the capital. The events of the Civil War will be covered a little bit later on, but some are especially relevant here. According to the shifting murals of the Temple of Morbius, events of the Civil War included the Siege of Scarrow, Declaration of Hate, and the return of the Vampires as a third party. At the end of the war, Morbius, who was still in his first incarnation, was put on trial on the planet Khan. His execution via dispersal chamber was decided in advance, however it went horrendously wrong. President Pandad fell to his death from one of Khan's cliffs as he was about to pronounce Morbius' sentence. In the confusion, Mahendri Solon, one of Morbius' human followers, spirited his brain away before Cardinal Helron, of Pandad's High Council, managed to action the machine and disintegrate Morbius' body. Helron proclaimed himself the new Lord President, and to preserve stability he made some concessions to the more approachable aspects of Morbius' political movement. Using the Elixir of Life, the Time Lords could now obtain, thanks to an uneasy alliance with the Sisterhood of Khan, more Gallifreyans were granted regeneration. Furthermore, Elrond made sure that all chapters would now be represented on the High Council, however it was decided, to prevent friction, that the Lord President and the Chancellor would always be of the same chapter. As Elrond was not of the same house as then-Chancellor Asmail, he was dismissed. This allowed Asmil to sink deeper into his study of the Matrix's secrets, setting him on the path which would one day make him declare himself the first true renegade Time Lord. The following events are undated, but showcase as the Time Lords became complacent with their power, other races grew in strength. Mordrin and a group of scientists attempted to steal the secrets of regeneration from Gallifrey, stealing a metamorphic symbiosis regenerator. But they were unsuccessful, and became stuck in a cycle of never-ending mutated regeneration. When the natives of Exclon began attacking and looting neighbouring planets, the Time Lords launched a full-scale attack on Exclon and devastated it. After a schism developed in the Time Lords College of Cardinals, Cardinal Thorak declared himself Lord President, and established his own How Council on the planet Dronid. He put together an army with the hopes of overthrowing the Gallifreyan High Council, the Time Lords on Gallifrey dealt with this rival president by simply ignoring him. Eventually the renegade president was dragged back to Gallifrey, leaving a lot of Gallifreyan time technology still on the planet. When the ambitious Time Lady Pandora became president, she intended for Gallifrey to use its power to reshape the web of time, and declared herself the Imperatrix, using an alien bodyguard to enforce her will. The High Council rebelled against her, triggering a civil war. Eventually they convinced the bodyguard to betray her, the bodyguard was returned home, but their planet was then trapped within a time loop. 
Pandora was erased, with the only evidence she'd ever existed being the ruined vaults and a remnant of her consciousness left in the Matrix. The Time Lords tried to prevent human research centred on the USS Eldridge, which was tearing a hole in space. Though they succeeded, the ship was believed to be lost. The Time Lords imprisoned the Kin. The Time Lords forced the Phaeron to shut down their wormholes. The High Council foresaw a future where every planet in the universe was infected by god seeds, and decided to break their law of non-intervention to conduct a universe-wide purge. The purge was not completely successful, however, as one seed survived. Cardinal Magos, one of Gallifrey's greatest scientists, was put on trial for experiments attempting to resurrect the dead as automatons. The High Council sentenced him to banishment. The fugitive doctor later attempted to escape her service to the Division, using a chameleon arc to hide on the Earth in 2020. Gat pursued her with the platoon of Jadoon, eventually tracking her down, only to discover another doctor in her company who revealed she came from a time where Gallifrey was in ruins. Gat attempted to kill the fugitive doctor, however the doctor had her weapon backfire. With Gat dead, the two doctors escaped the Jadoon. The Division eventually wiped out all of the doctor's memories of her origin and service for them, storing the memories within a Weeping Angel who later went rogue, alongside all of the Division's other knowledge. After eons of cultural stasis, irregularities appeared in the breeding engines, creating a generation of renegades. As recorded by Marnel in The Monkey to Time Saga, the Time Lords of this era began having visions of a future where they were raised, save for only five survivors, their primate shadows ruling the spaces between history under a great black eye. Most of Gallifrey dismissed the visions, though in actuality they were more valid than originally thought. Although other accounts presented Morbius as ancient history, a number of accounts suggested his reign of terror occurred at a time much closer to that of the Doctor than Rassilon, either during his lifetime or a short time before. The Book of the War and related sources likewise documented an identical figure called the Imperator, as a member of the Broken Generation, also including Grandfather Paradox, the War King, and the Doctor. Though unprecedentedly young for a president, he quickly rose to power over the High Council and led the Imperator Presidency. He wanted the Time Lords to abandon their non-interference policy and intervene in the universe for their own self-interest, campaigning for the conquest of lesser species. He gathered an army of mercenaries to himself, making extravagant promises to them about time travel and immortality. He also appointed Thessalia to lead the newly created Order of the Wheel, to prepare Gallifrey for a future war. However, Thessalia denounced the Imperator to the High Council, and he was exiled from Gallifrey with his army, going on to wreak havoc on the universe outside. The High Council created an alliance to fight his army, and what entailed was a war that saw the planets Sylvana, Xandir, Tanith, and Electra fall to Morbius. According to one account, the Fifth Doctor travelled back in time to the war, and was placed in charge of the Alliance battle fleet by the High Council. Morbius's forces were finally defeated on Khan, where he was captured, put on trial, and executed. However, as said before, Mahendri Solon removed Morbius's brain prior to his disintegration, going on to begin building a new body for Morbius. After Morbius's assumed death, his followers became known as the Cult of Morbius in year 5725.3 of the Rassilon era. The cultural shift Morbius caused on Gallifrey would have permanent ramifications, resulting in the rise of interventionalists. And that is how Gallifrey brought on stability in the universe, an action which ended up having negative consequences for them, giving rise to one of Gallifrey's most evil dictators. But his rise also ended up creating more renegade figures, some of which, like the Doctor, would also be benevolent in their rebellion. The rise of such interventionalists is what we'll be looking at next time, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But, as always, thanks for watching.